Hello and welcome to my first tutorial. In this video you will learn how to create an interactive fire tornado like this one, controlled with a Kinect. So, but first I will give you a quick overview about the network. So in blue you can see uh, it's our particle system with the metaball and uh, forces. Green box is our Kinect control system and in orange we use a sop to chop to get the necessary data for instancing a geometry and in purple we use some feedback effects uh, yeah, to make it look more pretty so let's start from scratch delete everything and start with a sphere um, a sort sop and connect it also to a transform Set the point sort to random and also decrease the sphere radius to 0.1. This will be our particle emitter. Next, we add a particle sop and we can set the birth rate to something like 2,500, life expect to 2.5, and the life variance to 0.7. Let me quickly turn off adaptive homing in this viewer here, otherwise it will shake around all the time. In our particle sop under the forces tab, uh, set the wind to 2 on the y-axis, so our particles move upward from their emitter. To add some outside forces, we add a emitter ball connected to a force sop and also a transform. And then we just plug it into the force input of the particle sop. To see where our force field is, uh, first turn on the template toggles on our two transform sops and the particle sop. Then open a second plane uh, and set it to geometry viewer. In here we can see exactly where the emitter is and in which area the force field is active. Next increase the radius of the emitter ball to 7 and move it up on the y-axis so that its boundary is at the uh, location of our particle emitter. In our force sop, um, turn on the force toggles and set the direction to 0, 1, 0, and the vortex force to 3.5 and the spiral force to 1. Now our particles rotate already in a kind of tornado way, but with some turbulence we can make it behave a little bit more organic. So let's set the turbulence to something like 7, 2 and 5 and the period to 0 0.75. Yeah, I think uh, like this it behaves already more like a fire tornado and we can close the ge geometry viewer and end the SOP network with a null. For the sake of overview, I like to add a comment box with shift A and yeah, name it particle system. Okay, so in this next part, we use a SOP to chop and only turn on the custom toggle. This data, we get some instancing data for our geometry. And on the attribute scope, we just write PV and life and re rename it to TX, TY, TZ, VX, VY, VZ, H and life. To create a value for the scale of the particles during their lifetime, we continue with a select chop and select only the channels H and life and combine these two channels in a math chop by dividing them. Uh, then we add a pattern chop, name the channel to scale and set the number of cycles to 0.5. When we connect the pattern with our math chop in a lookup, we get a scale value which is uh, small in the beginning, uh, increases to the midpoint of the particle um, life and decreases to its end of life. After that, we just merge these two uh, with a mer merge chop uh, to the rest of our data. And finish with a null. Now let's create a geometry and a basic render setup. Because we want our particles to look like kind of longish uh, bullets, 
we go inside the geometry and replace the standard torus with a sphere and transform it to a kind of a bullet shape. So uh, you can set the x scale to 0.1, y as well, leave z at 1 and uniform scale it down to 0.075. Don't forget to turn on the render flag. Let's create a constant material, assign it to our geometry and give it a yellow color. So to see our whole particle system, we need to adjust uh, the camera and move it up a little bit and 15 back. Okay, that looks good. We can see the whole particle system now and I'll just add another comment box here and name it uh, instancing. In our geometry, we can now turn on instance, instancing, drag and drop the null chop as the default instance operator and add our translate and scale values. On the second instancing tab, set rotate to vector to plus z or z and add the vector values vx, vy and vz. Let's add a black background for our render. So add a transform top. Um, set comp over background color uh, to on and the alpha value also to one. And before we start with our first feedback loop to create an orange feedback, we finish off with a null. Okay, to create the first uh, orange feedback effect, um, let's create a feedback top, an edge, a blur and a level top connected to a composite. Um, set it to over and also add our null as an input. Then drag the composite back onto our feedback. Our edge top, activate comp over input, set the black level to 0.03, strength to 0.7 and also set an orange edge color. Under blur settings, set the filter size to 4, sample step to 0.8 uh, and the level top turn down the opacity to 0.5. So let's have a look. But I think with the first feedback loop, uh, it looks already a little bit more like fire. In a second feedback loop, we want to give it uh, some red color as well. So let's create a feedback, an edge, a level and a comp. Set the comp to over, drag it back on the feedback. And let's set the opacity in the level top to 0.35 and under edge activate comp over input set the black level to 0.03 strength to 0.3 and sample step to 0.7 oh yeah, and uh, pick a red color i think the particles look already uh, like a fire tornado but i want to make it even more pretty with the feedback edge component from the palette uh, maybe there's a simpler technique with less operators but this just works fine for me so set the UE shift to 0, blur feedback to 1 and edge strength to 0.25. Let's get rid of these weird kind of holes uh, with the blur. Set pre-shrink to 2, filter size to 5 and sample step up to 1.5. With a switch top we can mix the composite and the blurred feedback edge together. Um, and for my likings blending the inputs to Something like 0.7 uh, looks just perfect. Looks beautiful. So let's add a null and also a comment box. Our fire tornado is ready and now in the last step we can use incoming Kinect data to control it. So use the Kinect job and two selects, um, one for the X value and one for the Y value, in this case uh, of my right hand. Um, increase the range from um, minus 1, 1 to minus 5 and 5 in a math job. And we can use a limit job to prevent uh, that we move the tornado out of our camera view. So for x, I uh, set the limit uh, to minus 5 and 5 and for y to 0 and 5. Now in this last step, we can drop these values on the translate parameters in our transform swaps for our particle emitter and also the force field. Uh, and we can also use that X value to control some external force uh, while we move our hands. 
So let's see what we built here and test if it's working. Thanks for watching. Uh, if this video helped you, show your support by hitting that like button and feel free to leave a comment. Thank you and see you next time.